Welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to be talking about is detecting throttling using the new Power Automate Maker Analytics feature. Let's go. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why this content is important. API actions are monitored based upon a user's entitlement. So what is an API action? You can think of an API action as really actions that exist on our canvas itself. It could be calling a connector and its related action like send an email. It could be setting variables, right? That's also an API action. Converting HTML to text, that would be another action or API action. So those are all things that will contribute to an end user's entitlement. Now, what can happen is if you exceed your entitlement, you might see throttling occur. And what, what is throttling? Throttling essentially is the reducing the amount of throughput that you have in order to protect the overall system itself, to ensure that people don't go overboard and try to squeeze too much performance or too many executions out of their existing license entitlement. Now, the product group does call out that when a user does go over, the performance of their flow may be impacted depending upon the degree in which they're over. So if you're just marginally over your entitlement, I wouldn't expect to see any sort of impact or much of an impact. If you are dramatically over your entitlement, that's when you can start to expect the performance actually slow because you are further out of bounds per se than if you were just temporarily marginally out of bounds uh, from an entitlement perspective. So there's a few things we can do. And one of the, the things that we can leverage naturally is the feature we're gonna talk about to help us detect these situations, but in general, if you are seeing throttling, and, and you might also receive an email uh, when you are throttled, and that's one another indicator as well as, as a, in addition to what I'm gonna show you here, but if you do need to reduce your, your actions, what are some of the things you can do? So number one, you may want to refactor your flow, and I totally appreciate that that may not always be possible, or you may have already been using best practices, so that mileage may vary, but things to look for. Are you bringing in too many records into your flow and then processing them, say, through a loop? And then having a condition as part of that loop saying, oh, okay, I'm gonna take a look at all of these records in a SharePoint list, then I'm gonna check to see if a value equals X. If it equals X, then I'll go do more things, right? Those are gonna be unnecessary calls. So things that you can do is filtering at source. This could be using a trigger condition to ensure that the data reaching your flow is relevant data that you want to process. Another thing is using OData. So for example, maybe you're connecting to CDS and you're going to go ahead and retrieve a series of accounts or contacts. Well, why don't you filter when you make that call as opposed to retrieving this result set and then looping through that. So that's another tip as well. In general, avoid unnecessary loops. Loops will only cascade the problem. I totally appreciate that sometimes loops are necessary, but if you can avoid loops, do it. And the other thing is avoid variable or compose action over use. Once again, we, you know, especially if you've come from a programming background, variables have their purpose. There's no denying it. However, these are also API actions. So if you can get away from setting a variable temporarily just to reuse it, where you could have just used dynamic content, or used an expression, you know, those are situations you're gonna to want to avoid. Red flags or sort of yellow warning signs are if you're doing a lot of this inside of a loop itself. So those are things, be careful. Now, if you've gone through and refactored your flows and taken these the set of recommendations into account, the other thing you can now look at is additional licensing. This could be bumping up your per user plan, especially if you're in an Office 365 plan, or moving to a per flow plan, which will give you more runway as well. And so those are options that you do have. Before we dive deeper into the content, I wanted to let you know about an emerging community found at serverlessnotes.com. This is a community resource that covers best practices, tips, and latest announcements built on contributions by technology enthusiasts from around the globe. On serverlessnotes.com, you'll find content related to Power Automate, Azure Logic Apps, Azure Service Bus, Azure Functions, and much, much more. Serverlessnotes.com is brought to you by Serverless360, a portal that is focused on operations and support 
for Microsoft Azure serverless resources. Now this is a complementary tool to the Azure portal and it helps organizations in supporting Azure serverless applications. You can find out more about Serverless 360 at serverless360.com. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about entitlement. Now here's an image from the official Microsoft documentation. So I'll include a link in the description of this video. So go ahead and check this out. But this will help illustrate the challenge here. So for folks that might be entitled through Office, Office 365, you have 2000 API requests per day. And so as we're gonna see, those can actually accumulate quite quickly. And that's why refactoring becomes very important. You want to make sure that you are leveraging these actions and getting the most value for them. Now, if you are licensed through a per app or per user plan on the, on the Power Automate side, your entitlement increases up to 5,000. And then if you are licensed through Dynamics, your entitlement also increases as well. So it very much depends on how you are accessing Power Automate and your entitlement as a, as a result. And so this is where I've talked about where you might need to increase your license from an Office 365 license to some sort of per user plan. Now, there's another plan which isn't on the screen here, which is a per flow plan. And once again, per flow plans, the goal of those is really to allow you this higher water level of access, but to address some of those enterprise scenarios, especially when you might have many users needing to access some sort of workflow. And you can basically extend it to as many users as you want. And as a result, you get some capacity and you can naturally add capacity on. So these are all things that you do need to take into account. Now, what I wanna to show today though, is how you can help detect where you're at with your action consumption. And it's a new feature that's part of Maker Analytics. And so let's go ahead and let's see a demo of that here right now. All right, so I am in Power Automate and here I have a flow. And I've scheduled this flow to run for the past week or so just to uh, ensure I have data so that I can go ahead and show you. Uh, so number one, you can see what plan you're on by navigating to a flow and then being able to look at the plan here. Uh, if you did have capacity for per flow plan, um, now in this case, I don't have any capacity that's allocated to this environment, but if I did, I could go ahead and switch the mode and this flow could then draw from that capacity instead of this per user plan. Now the maker analytics feature is right here. Uh, fun fact, uh, when I was on the Flow team a few years ago, I did uh, own this feature, and so I had implemented uh, the errors capability and the usage uh, tab as well. But this is someone else's work, uh, which is great to see. So here we've got a new tab, it's called Actions. Uh, as part of our Maker Analytics, our data is only stored for 30 days, and we can naturally uh, filter that out if we want a smaller duration. Here what we do see is if every day that this has been running, we've got uh, the number of actions that have been consumed, right? So we've got the 4th of October, 5th of October, 6th of October, etc. And as a result, we can see that around 200 or so, between two and 230, I guess, uh, this is how many actions we've actually been, been using. So if you are experiencing slowness, you know, slowness with, with air quotes, <clears throat> this should be the first place that you go check. So we'll give you a quick indication of the number of actions that are being used. Now, the other thing I wanna call out here is, right now I'm in a per user plan. I'm looking at an individual flow. So you will need to check multiple flows because this flow could be under, but you could have another flow that's drastically over and the aggregate of that is going to have an impact on whether or not you are throttled. So uh, I do want to caution that, but this is a great way for you to get some very quick insights around the number of actions. The other thing I will call out is that this is not immediate. There is a delay. Uh, generally, uh, in my past experience, and I don't know if this has changed, it's been a two to three hour delay for this to be refreshed. I don't know if that has changed, but I do wanna call out that this is not real-time analytics. 
So this is the, 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 the dashboard I did want to show you. This is the first thing you should check if I'm if you're if you perceive or you feel like your your flows are not performing, come here and check, see where your actions are, and then go back and look at the advice I'd given you previously around how you might refactor your flow. And if you're still uh, consuming too many actions, then you're going to need to look at what another plan may be able to offer you. All right, so thanks for checking out this episode. If you're not following me on Twitter, I'd encourage you to do so at Weirzy. And if you are not subscribed, it would be great if you could go ahead and click that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this episode, please go ahead and give it a like. Thanks, and we'll see you again soon on the channel. Take care.